Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Fit Steve here. Um, today I'm going to show you how to set up a large hard drive for your Amiga computer. Um, it's quite advanced this tutorial, so um, you'll need to have good knowledge of um, Workbench OS and also WinUAE to achieve this. It's not <coughs> a guide for beginners really, so bear that um, in mind. Uh, today I'll be setting up a 40 gigabyte hard drive. Um, it's hooked up to my PC with a USB caddy and um, it will be, you know, it's an IDE hard drive, so I can use any Amiga computer which supports IDE. Um, but we'll, the first thing we'll need to do is clean this drive of any Windows volumes because um, before we set them up on WinUAE, uh, they'll need to have all, you know, all the master boot partitions removed and such. So I'll guide you first through that. We'll need to open up a um, new uh, command um, prompt and type in disk part. So disk part is the tool we're going to use to um, wipe this drive clean. Now be very very careful because if you wipe the wrong drive obviously you'll be in big trouble so um, obviously just be very careful. Now with disk part the first thing to do is to list the disks that we've got available. Okay you can see I've got a few drives here. Disk 9 is the drive that we want to work on. That's the 40 gig ID drive I want to prepare to use in my Amiga. Um, so we'll select disk 9. Again be very careful make sure the disk you want to work on is correct. If you go in, if you clean the wrong disk as I said before you're going to be in big trouble so I'm uh, confident I'm using the right disk here disk 9 so I'm going to clean that disk. Now what you'll see once I run that is this volume I've got here for disk 9 will um, we'll go back to unallocated so let's clean that okay now you see disk 9 is clean it's ready to use in WinUAE for setting up our drive I've already got my inventory loaded up um, and my settings done as you use your own usual settings um, I'm going to be using classic workbench 3.9 to do the um, preparation of the drive. Um, the OS 3.9 toolbox is much better than the 3.1 version. It shows the right drive parameters and sizes and that's very important when working with large drives. It can be done with 3.1's toolbox but uh, not as recommended. I, I do recommend you use a 3.9 um, toolbox. So first I'm going to add a hard file which is my installation of OS 3.9. That's what I wanted to use. Okay. And I'm going to add um, a directory which has got all my files and such, like the file system. So call it PC and select my directory. And I'm going to add my hard drive as well that I want to prepare. So when you list, you'll see an empty drive with your size. So it's my Samsung drive I want to work on. So select that, read, write. Again, be careful not to select the wrong drive. Now, there, there are some fail safes in WinUAE, so you should be, it should stop you from doing anything to your system drives, but just, you know, as always, just be careful and don't um, select the wrong drive. So we'll add this hard drive now and uh, start the emulation. So this is OS 3.9 that I'm running. And as I said before, the toolbox here is much better than the 3.1 version, which is why I use it. And it's a bit easier to use as well. Now in the tools, HD toolbox. Now the device that we're using is UAE HF device. That will be, that's what our drive, if you like, is hooked up to. And you can see here the Samsung drive comes up. Now, because it's not been used before, it prompts us to install an RDB, and that's where the drive's parameters and settings are stored. So, OK, yes, we want to install the RDB. Now, we read the configuration. As you can see, it brings up Samsung Drive, and it's a 40 gig drive. So, that's OK, we can install that. Click OK. <coughs> now, we want to partition the drive, so click on Partition Drive. Now, I'm going to delete all these because We'll do it our own way, not with default settings. So let's delete everything. And let's create a new partition for our booting. I make the boot partition quite small, usually about 500 meg. You can click down here to make it to get to the size you want to. 
the exact size. So we're going to go with 500 meg. There we go. And um, you can change the uh, drive name, whichever you like. I'm going to go with DHO and make it bootable. Now, as mentioned before, we need to use a custom file system in order to use larger partitions and, and uh, above four gigabytes. So we're going to use something called PFS3 uh, all AIO. So we need to add that to our drive first of all. So we're clicking on the, cancel that for you, add update. And we want to browse for our file system, so add new file system. Now, if you have it in your L directory already, you can pick it from there. But I've got it stored elsewhere, so I'm going to browse to the location I've got it stored. It's PFS3 AIO handler, so load that file in. We need to edit the identifier code. Now, the correct code for PFS3 is 0x5046537. Then press return and click OK. The next step is to change the file system of this partition we've just created. So we'll click on change. The drop down box, select PFS303 and then change the block size to 512. Double check here that your max transfer is correct. Uh, the default setting on this version of toolbox is um, OX0001 f E double O, or you can use OX one FE double O. They're the two values which you should use. Anything else um, potentially could cause issues, so bear that in mind. Um, so we can click OK now. We're, we're happy with that. Now, any more partitions we create will uh, be the same settings as the first one. So if I click in a blank area and click New Partition, we'll have all the same settings, and just select the size that you want. So we'll do two equal ones, call them DH1 and DH2. Now once you've created your partitions to the sizes that you want, you can double check things are as you want them and as you can see they all come out the same as the first one. So we can save this now, click OK. Now at this point when we try to exit, we'll be prompted to restart the Amiga, so we'll reboot now. And you'll see um, some icons appear on the workbench here, which will need to be formatted. So these are these are new partitions, if you like. So the first one, we'll right click and icons format disk, and we'll call it whatever you want to call it. So we can call it workbench, and do a quick format. Always do a quick format. And you'll see PFS3 is loading up now. It gives you a prompt here as you format the drive. Call this anything you like. And finally, the last one. So that's it, we've set up our hard drive now with the partitions and PFS3 file system. Uh, we're ready to install the OS to our drive now. Um, what I'll do is use the directory opus installed here just to copy across. So we'll find our classic webbench 3.9 partition. Copy all the data, or we'll select all the data, and locate our new workbench partition and then we'll copy that across. Okay, so that's all copied across. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure everything, everything has worked correctly. Now I'm going to hit F12 and restart the emulator and remove everything, all the drives. I'm going to re-add my hard drive. 
I'm going to choose the IDEO this time rather than the UAE controller so we can make sure that the um, large hard drive supports working correctly. This is pre-built into OS 3.9. Uh, if we were using another OS such as 3.1, we'd need to patch the SCSI device as well. So I'm going to show you that afterwards. So add the hard drive and I'm going to add my directory again which has got my files in it. Okay, so here we are back in our Workbench 3.9 environment. Um, as mentioned, I used the check 4 gigabyte tool to make sure the patching was it has worked to give the give us a large drive support. So it's stored in my temp folder. Um, the author was kind enough to send me through an updated version of the FileSys um, file because it wasn't aware of PFS3 AIO, so it was giving me an error before, um, but it's updated now, thankfully, and we can see. Um, with the check that our drives, so we've got the workbench and the two larger drives are the ones we're concerned about, 17, 19 gig. Um, the SCSI device is patched by the operating system by the Boing Bag 2 update to OS 3.9, so that's done for us. Uh, as mentioned, if you've got workbench 3.1, you need to do that yourself um, and read it all PFS3, which gives us the further support as well. So. Our drives over 4 gig, which are the two mentioned, uh, check out OK. So it's safe to use those drives. You won't come across any of the 4 gigabyte errors, such as overwriting your, um, you know, system partition. So there we are. It's, it's all up and running now. That's your. You could put that straight into an A1200, and it would it would be or an A4000 on the IDE, and it would be good. Would be good to go. But as promised, I'll show you how to set up a Workbench 3.1 um, large drive support as well. So I'm going to hit F12 and restart my emulator and remove all the drives. I'm going to add a um, classic Workbench pack that's based on Workbench 3.1. So I'll add the hard file first for this pack. Uh, I'm going to use the advanced SP pack, which is based on Workbench 3.1. And add my hard drive again which is the RDB Samsung drive and start. Now we can see our Workbench 3.9 set up here. I'm going to format this drive. And we'll just give it a quick format and we'll call it the same Workbench again. As you see, it's PFS3 still, and uh, the icons have gone from the desktop now. What we'll do is we'll copy this setup to our hard drive. So we'll pick up the system directory and our workbench drive, all and copy again. Okay, what I'll do now to demonstrate the 4 gigabyte issue, I'm going to boot this up without patching the SCSI device so you can see um, I imagine that the two larger partitions won't show up. So let's add our hard drive and IDEO, that way it's using the um, 3.1 kickstart SCSI device, that way we can see if things are going to work or not. So as expected, our bigger drives don't work properly. They don't show up as um, proper partitions. And that means we need to patch the SCSI device, as mentioned earlier on. So uh, Classic Workbench has got those already for us and code in place to make this much easier. You can use a tool like Load Module to load in your own SCSI device. Um, but this is all built into Classic Workbench for you. So I shall open Directory Opus again. Browse to my files and large HD and 1 to 8 gig support and pick a SCSI device which we want to patch. We can go for Dubris one, that's a, a good device and locate our 
DHO and devs folder. It must go in here because that's the place where Classic Web is going to look for this um, SCSI device. Now you change it based on whatever Amiga you're using. So you've got the A1200, 4000, and 600 versions. I'm going to use the 1200 version because that's what uh, Amiga I'm running or emulating. So we copy that and we need to find it where we've copied it and rename it. So it must just be SCSI device. Okay, now if we um, restart everything, I'm going to add that um, check 4 gig tool again because it will need the updated version. So let me add my PC folder again. Okay, and now when we start, should do a quick reset loading the SCSI device and now it should start to load and if we're lucky there we go as you see the data and data 2 drives have now come up on the um, on the workbench so um, it would appear that the patching has worked but just to be sure we're going to run that um, check 4 gig test again And I'm going to copy over the updated version. And again, I'll browse to my temp folder and run the check. As you can see, as before, everything has passed. So, um, just to recap then for you there, on Workbench 3.1, you need to do the patch yourself. Um, with Classic Workbench it's got the facility built in for you, just copying it into the devs folder actually is enough to to do that. So I hope, hope you found the tutorial useful, um, I know it's a bit advanced in places, um, I'll try and help if you have any questions so feel free to, to message me or, or reply on the video. Um, there are other file systems you can use as well such as SFS that um, will achieve the same and there's a number of SCSI devices my best advice to you really is to read up the documentation that comes with all these different file systems and um, SCSI devices so you can understand better what it's doing because once you understand that it, it gets you a step closer. But uh, as I say, I hope this tutorial helped. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thank you for watching.